Hi everybody, this is Kara Thrasher Livingston with Senior and Disability Services and you're in the right place for our webinar about uh, the Harmony Data System and some information for our providers who are doing our habilitation services. Uh, we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to go ahead and <laughs> I just had to get rid of a screen there. Uh, we're we're going to go ahead and give the presentation as we did before and just kind of move a little bit fast with that and then we'll get into the um, the part about the habilitation services. I uh, just wanted to welcome you to our broadcast and I also wanted to let you know that we have our staff, our training team members here. We have um, Cena Fisher and Delight Mills. So thank you to you two for joining us uh, here today. Uh, we'll give Hey, <laughs> we'll give everybody a couple minutes to, um, you know, get in the space here. Uh, if you've shared your link, I can see already we have a couple of duplicate names. That's okay. If you shared your link with somebody, it may be that I see you as um, with somebody else's name. That's okay. Um, no worries at all. Uh, we'll do a couple things to see if you'd like to sign in under your own name. You'd be more than welcome to do that. Um, as you know, in our webinars, we have a few things that you can do in the control area of your webinar with um, your icons and the things that you see. So in your webinar control area, you should see a little circle with a hand in the middle. Um, that is what I like to ask you to hit when I say, uh, raise your hand for us, wave high, give us a high five here this afternoon, whichever you wanna think of it as I just would like you to go ahead and do that so that I know that you can see us and you can hear us and you can hear, you know, what, you can hear the presentation. So if you would please just locate that little hand and hit that hand and say hi to us here today. Okay, awesome. Our uh, computers run on different speeds, so, so it takes a little while for them to, you know, to go up and what I can see here is, um, a long list of your names with little hands popping up next to them. So I appreciate that so much. Thank you. It looks like most of us know where that control is. I'm gonna go ahead and lower them. And uh, the other thing that you can do is, of course, you're, you're entering in a muted status. So you can hear me, you can hear our training staff um, when they unmute, but you have entered in a muted status. So that means that you wouldn't be able to share over audio, but you can share by texting in questions. So you should see something that says questions um, or maybe chat or something like that. A, a An icon, it's probably a little square with an arrow in it that you can click and open up an area where you can actually text to us. So if you would please do that, um, open up your, your text area and you could state your name, you could say hello, you could tell us how the weather is, where you are, whatever you'd like to say. Um, just let me know that you can find that and you know how to use that area. And if you shared your link, maybe you want to sign in on your in your own name. I'm not sure if if you can remember emailing a colleague the link, <laughs> then you're probably here in under somebody else's name. Whoever you got the link, whoever you sent the link to, they would be under your name. And that's okay. Um, just if you if you want to sign in you're good <laughs> it's really you welcome hi welcome to, to welcome to you from juno and anchorage okay great thanks for practicing how to use the uh the chat function it's always good to to give it a little bit of a try okay um now, before we start our presentation, I just have a few other quick questions for you. Um, I would like to know the composition of our audience as far as your experience and your role. So if you are uh, here as a provider of habilitation services, go ahead and raise that hand. Or you do provide, currently provide habilitation services for the waiver to people we serve people who get those services. All right, good. Probably about a third of us are raising the hand and maybe some of the others are just, um, you know, taking their time getting raised, that's okay too. 
Okay. All right. Um, raise your hand for me if you don't provide habilitation services, uh, but you're still a provider. You know, if you do other services other than habilitation, like only PCS or something like that. Couple of us here. Okay. And um, if you're a care coordinator, raise your hand. You care coordinator, all of our care coordinators here. All right, a few of us are the care coordinator role. Okay, and of course that would be, uh, I would have left to ask for anybody else. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Sorry how that came out. Anybody else who wasn't in any of those categories, go ahead and raise your hand for me. All right, okay, cool, thank you. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this away. Um, so. We're going to show you here a, a PowerPoint, which we've put into the handout section. And you, you should see something that says handouts. You can click that open. And if your device will allow you to download uh, PDF copies or PDF documents, I should say, um, you should be able to download that. If you can't download it, don't worry. Um, I'm setting forth to give a, a group email to everyone who's attended our classes. Um, with the materials inside, you know, attached to it. So you can also get it, you may also get an email. And of course, if you could download them, you could just delete the email. But um, most of us can uh, download those. Um, I was only able to fit one document in there today. So um, seeing it and delayed, I don't know if you can try to throw some of the others in there, uh, upload them into that. Um, you would go ahead and give it a try. Sometimes it's grumpy with me and it doesn't like to um, accept any other documents, just sure. one or sometimes none. <laughs> go ahead. Sure. This is Sina. Yeah, I'll go ahead and put them in there. All right. So awesome. that we get more than just the presentation. Now, there's a couple other tools that are going to be really handy if you guys can get them. And like she said, just pull them out of the download right now and we're going to email it to you as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So. Let's talk about the Harmony data system from our provider's viewpoint. Uh, so what is it? And many of us may already be familiar, you know, so this is just a quick review for those of us who are uh, catching up and a refresher. Um, Senior Disability Services is currently using a data system called Harmony, and it's a secure online website platform and approved users such as SDS and certain provider types can view the client files and submit information. And client files means the files of people who use our services. Um, it is only for required procedures with SDS on behalf of the client. So as I usually say it, it's only for business between SDS and the provider um, on behalf of a client. There are many things that it is not, which I'll go over in just a bit. Um, so that you can be clear it only has a, one specific role uh, and as far as the, the provider use goes. Uh, what happens internally is uh, basically, in a nutshell, staff, SDS staff review and respond to submissions that you would make as a provider in the Harmony system. And then we sort of co-create and co-manage a provider file, you know, depending on, on how we serve that person and if you're a Harmony user or not as an external user. So what are the limitations? Um, it is certain provider available to certain provider types only, okay? Uh, not all provider types will be using Harmony. Um, there is an approval process. So it, it's, a, it's a matter of becoming an approved Harmony user um, once you are, once we determine that you're that provider type. Um, approved users can only access permitted information. So what I mean by that is this is not information central for everyone. This is only information that a, a provider would see regarding a person's case file that has to do with the services they do. So that means there's different levels of, of um, information access to different roles, different users. So that being said, although it is an SDS system, with, with a few exceptions, other state departments or divisions do not use it, even though we might serve the same people. 
Um, so it is not central information central. So a lot of times people think, well, can we just go look this up in Harmony? And it's a matter to do with a completely different uh, division within the department. It is probably not the case that we could see that because it's very limited. It's not information central for everything. It doesn't do for everyone, I should say. It does not do provider record keeping or archiving. So it's not a place to keep all of your client files within it upload, uploaded, for example. Um, it doesn't generate form templates or manage any kind of provider workflow. Um, so this is why when we talk about archiving, there may be within a client file um, attachments and uploaded documents, uh, but as a provider, if you use Harmony, you would a provider that uses Harmony would also need to keep those separately just simply for the fact for uh, compliance with our regulation that has to do with archiving and keeping records available for seven years from the date of service. So a quick example as to why would be, you know, seven years after the date you serve somebody, suppose they leave your service, they, you know, they're done or they move out of state, you would keep that on file, um, but you would not have, have access to their record in Harmony anymore. So in order to bring forth records as you would be required to by regulation, you'd have to keep them in a separate place, a separate way, in a secure way. So um, that's why I make that distinction. It doesn't connect into Therap or any other client service management software or website. It is its own thing and it's really just for business between SDS and, um, and a, a provider user on the client's behalf. Um, it is not a beefed up email system. For example, we wouldn't be able to, you know, use it to send messages between and amongst providers. Um, if I was a, a provider user, I wouldn't be able to send a message to another one or connect with another one, uh, another provider with within it. Or to use it as email for um, senior disability services to connect with staff. It is not that. Uh, the reason for it is because it is for client files. So everything that goes into the into the client file has to be business of the client file, not you know conversations between and amongst providers or between SDS staff and um, a provider user that doesn't have anything to do with the the reason why the you know the file is being altered. Okay, uh, you would still need to use DSM for emailing protected health info about the people you serve between and amongst providers. And I guess my best example is, you know, if I'm a care coordinator, a person can um, give me release of information to send information about me to another provider that I might want to use um, to give my services. That's what DSM would be used for. So a lot of times people ask me, hey, Kara, does, you know, um, Harmony mean that DSM is going away? Well, its use will be reduced in a certain manner, especially for our care coordinators, uh, but it won't be going away. So just some thoughts about the limits. Uh, why are we doing this today? We identified this as a training need um, because our care coordinators are beginning to use Harmony. Um, they do complete training through us, our training team, and become a full user of Harmony, meaning that they participate in that that dialogue and that exchange to create the client file in Harmony from their role. They do create a support plan, a la a plan of care in Harmony. And uh, so you will we'll talk about that and we'll look at a plan of care, a, a sample plan of care. By the way, all the work products that you see here are entirely um, fictitious. So if you get a copy of the plan of care and names and all that, Nothing is real, so we're distributing it, st distributing it to you, so you can, you know, have a good example. Uh, they create the plan, and they're going to be trained in stages. So right now, there are about 30 care coordinators trained. You'll continue to see traditional documents as you're accustomed to in your work with a care coordinator, and you'll start to see some harmony documents, and namely the the support plan. Um, is signing it on its signature sheet uh, and a cost sheet or cost overview. You'll begin to see those, those look different. So we'll talk about what those look like and how they're made in harmony with just the basics um, so that you're aware of 
you know, why it looks the way it does. All right, the formatting is a little different. Um, in some cases, it's a lot different. Um, so we wanted to help all of our providers understand the care coordinator's support plan work process, of course, and we wanted to help our providers understand that no, that new formatting so that when you see it, it doesn't, you know, look like it's not real or you're not accustomed. Okay, just a big hint is not a whole lot is changing in the terms of a provider's use of the documents. Uh, not a whole lot is changing at all. It just looks different. And there's a planning process to do with the habilitation services that we're hoping to introduce to you that you'll find useful in working with the care coordinator and working with the people you serve um, to use the to use it to develop HAB services or to at least generate a conversation around the habilitation services that you're doing so that it all kind of makes sense and goes in line. Okay, so who uses it? Our senior and disability services staff use it. Uh, Division of Public Assistance uses it for the info they use to serve our recipients that we both serve. Assisted Living Licensing uses it for info that they use to serve recipients that we both serve, okay? It's limited, right? It's not an entire client file. It's a limited use um, on, the term, on terms of those two particular users. Our long-term care facility administrators use it. That would be, you know, our nursing uh, facility, um, skilled nursing facility, a long-term care facility. So they use it for their admissions and they use it for their renewals and things like that. Um, aging and Disability Resource Centers, they use it for creating a person-centered intake. Our Personal Care Services Administrators use it for ap application and reapplication for PCS services. And newly, our Care Coordinators, our newest users, um, will are using Harmony. Um, so we have uh, stages of, of entry into Harmony where our care coordinators have been actually able to view a client file for quite a long time. And so now they have become full users so that they can manage the file and make uploads and, and uh, submit applications, plans of care amendments uh, to include renewal applications and renewal plans within Harmony and do so certain other functions that are, of course, uh, required of a care coordinator within Harmony. At this time, other provider types are not scheduled to use Harmony. So there is not a plan to include other provider types right now um, until further notice. And I don't have a lot of people ask me, like, well, when will a case manager use it? They're not planned to use it. If it were to change, we would make a pretty significant community outreach as to what that would look like. Okay. Uh, questions so far? Thoughts, questions, I'm um, looking at the questions area. By the way, please feel free to submit a question at any time. Um, either I'll grab it or most likely Sina and Delight, they're monitoring our questions. And also um, we'll support this presentation to, you know, when we get to the explanation parts of the plan. Questions or thoughts so far? Okay, so what are a few ways that a care coordinator will work in Harmony? Um, I am not demonstrating to you in Harmony what this looks like. It, the, what I am doing is sharing a screenshot of, of a demonstration website that does not have official names or anybody's name on it at all, just to sort of explain explain to you how a care coordinator's work gets organized in it in Harmony. Uh, basically, this is a picture of a client caseload. So this is what a, a care coordinator would see when they are, you know, looking at their caseload. It's one of the many views that they could do to, you know, get through that caseload. They can look at it through different aspects. Um, they can see provider ID numbers, linked providers. They can see individual case files. And then what you would see here, it has consumer. Well, these don't look like names, but these are where a person's name would be, a, a client's name would be here, right? So our client 
is named APDD Training One May. You know, that's not a name, but that is where a care coordinator would see their um, would see their uh, their case load list, if you will. Um, and there's a question here it says not seeing the PowerPoint screens. Um, ideas to troubleshoot. Maybe refresh. Um, I'm, I'm showing I'm, it. I'm seeing it. I see list of clients. So um, mm -hmm. perhaps this individual's got their own broadband issue. Maybe, maybe it's just not you know articulating with their um, broadband access. Yeah, the okay. computers are showing caught up to me. So okay, okay. So don't worry though. You'll get the materials. Um, you know, this is an introductory, so we're always here for questions too. So, you know, if, if it's if you need to help beyond today to understand this, we're certainly there to help you, and we would love to do that. You could send us an email to our inbox, um, SDS training at alaska.gov. Um, comment says if you're on the phone, you have to scroll over from my screen, so swipe right. Good answer, and you know, it's 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 odd but we don't you know attend these as a user all the time so sometimes we don't have those hints and tips ready to go um, okay so this is a list of of clients and different tabs and it, it's sort of meant to make you think of a file folder where you would open and there'd be different tabs in it okay that is what this looks like here um, this is an example of a client file so what we see here is a client file. The person, person's last name is APDD Training One. First name is May. Um, you can see that the cover sheet of it is their demographics, and then the rest of the tabs have to do with the the different processes and elements of a case file that a care coordinator would work in, uh, particularly with the one called Notes. Division and programs would fill in as the person applies and becomes approved for whatever program they're in, wherever they are. And you know, they move from, you know, anywhere from ADRC or DDRC all the way through application and approval and renewal and things like that. So, uh, lots of communication back and forth done through notes. There are forms available that are used in Harmony. Um, the care coordinator would fill out plans. That would be a support plan and the um, the different uh, historical things you can see here. Appointments are how a care coordinator should be able to know about an assessment appointment for that person. Um, again, this is all um, business between senior disability services and the person that the care coordinator facilitates. And our provider, as always, will be you know, selected for that service as a provider in a plan that you sign off on and you talk about, you know, the goals and objectives for the HAB services on behalf of that person. So it's not a whole lot different for a provider. Um, so what a care coordinator does is they develop and enter the application and support plan and amendments. Um, a provider participates on the planning team according to regulation as you always have done. Uh, you provide the care coordinator with a summary of the service outcomes for their waiver. We want to have a summary written in a renewal plan, for example. Um, we know that many of us are using, you know, like a proprietary software that would allow a printout of a service delivery outcomes. It's okay to include those and provide that to the care coordinator, but we also want to see a summary, a written summary of the service outcomes um, to place into that plan. And again, a care coordinator does all of this. It's not, it's not where you'll go in and change change it without a care coordinator doing it. It's that the care coordinator will do it. So you'll communicate with the care coordinator and they'll enter these things. A provider would contribute or otherwise support objectives and interventions, of course, for the habilitation services. Again, through the care coordinator, you would uh, develop from the person's goals, objectives, and interventions and with the person of course there may be many objectives 
applied to certain goals. Um, and interventions would be the actions that your staff take, of course, for the HAB services. You would still develop those with, with the person and with the care coordinator, and the care coordinator would enter them. You'll see the same forms you're used to, release of information, VOD, QDC, medical documentation, guardianship, power of attorney, and the support plan that the person signs, legal reps sign, and providers sign. Um, the support plan, um, when a care coordinator is working on that in Harmony, they'll, when they're finished, they'll create um, what we call a report, which is not a report like you and I think of. It's really just a, a name that Harmony uses to call um, a printout, <laughs> a PDF of a completed form that could either be printed on paper or could be saved as a digital file, either one. Um, they will produce that for the individual legal rep or and providers to sign. So for that reason, you might see signature pages that look a little different. You'll see plans that look a little different. Uh, so let's take a look at a plan and um, so we can see exactly what that looks like. I'm going to freeze my screen and I will pick up a plan here. Just give me one sec. You have a, a sample plan in there that I just put in there and a new cost okay. overview sheet. Oh, for right. some reason, it's not showing me the newest, newest plan. Whatever, mm -hmm. it's in there. It's just the one from yesterday was not linking the goals properly. So, mm -hmm. okay. Is it the one that's just called sample plan, Jesse? That one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. That's okay. That works. It works. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, so we just again, encourage any providers, if you've got questions and you're looking at a plan, please reach out to the training unit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because a lot of times you're asking a question of a care coordinator because you're used to that and they can't really answer the question either. So if you're questioning what you're seeing, please just give us a phone call, shoot us an email. Well, shoot us an email. We're not at our desk these days, but email works great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our inbox works really well, so because we can all pick it up. It's sdstraining at alaska.gov, and we're more than happy to help you with that. All right, so what we have here is a person-centered support plan. Um, again, completely fictitious information, and this is its cover sheet. And it's quite a long plan, so I might pick and choose different areas that we're going to concentrate on based on um, cues also from my from our training team because you know I need your help to pick out the, the most pertinent parts as well. Um, I have to give a shout out to our, our training team, Sina and Delight and Cassandra for, for um, tackling the mountain and climbing the mountain with our care coordinators of training. Um, this has been quite a long story to get to this point where we could present this to you. Uh, so you know, many, many thanks to them, and um, we continue to learn. I know I do. <laughs> so, all right, if we have our... a second. When we get down to the goals area and whatnot, we want to switch over to the one that's got the two behind it. Sorry. Okay, that's okay. I something was weird there. Yeah, that's okay. We'll do that. So, this is a plan. It, it's it got section one, information that you're accustomed to. Okay, you can see this is all entered. It, it it actually gets entered into different fields in Harmony. So it comes out, it's all, you know, put together behind the scenes to come out onto this PDF report slash, it's just a, a PDF um, file document for a care coordinator to print or email in a secure way for reading and um, discussing and eventual signatures. Um, and the, all that work is managed by the care coordinator. They list a diagnosis and medical. Underneath it, you'll see health summary. And sometimes you'll see the formatting um, is a little bit different because it's internally feeding information into a form. So here we have health information here, but there's a white space, you know, it says health summary. But the health summary itself doesn't start until down here because it's quite a, quite a lot of text. Um, it's still the health summary. It just didn't start up above it starts down below and and that's normal we see that happening you know just a formatting thing we're looking for the information and that's how you can understand that too uh, this being a health summary it does have dates we really love to see dates specific dates about 
um, different health interventions is very, very helpful. Um, not everybody will have exactly this as a health summary. We know that. Uh, but we're just giving you an example of what you'll see. We have the emergency response part. And um, just then it says emergency response plan, which actually comes underneath the next page, pages header. Uh, so we describe the safety resources closest to the person and how they'll access. And then that is entered by a care coordinator. Um, and you can see these questions or these statements that a care coordinator will, of course, flesh out with their narrative underneath, um, including the person's concerns for their own safety and level of risk. So these are things that have been included in the traditional plan and continue to be included in you know, the Harmony plan. Medical contacts appear in a list. Medications appear in a list. And again, if you see that something here isn't filled out that normally is just, this is just an example. We're not um, putting this up as, an, as a content, you know, quality other than the, this is where things go and it, and it should make sense that that's where, that's why it's there. There might not be every single detail here uh, on the cost sheet. I think there's some impossibilities there with how many services you could possibly get. Please just ignore those things. This is just to show you an, a visual example of what, what it looks like, okay? Underneath that, adaptive medical equipment. Um, these questions here, we had a, a couple of questions about what this was, you know, why the question marks. Those are actually just um, left over from filling it out. The care coordinator would fill it out, and those are little little segments that they would fill out that just print out here. Um, the care coordinator could certainly delete those things um, if they weren't applicable. So here we just made an example that if you see it, great. If you don't, don't worry about it. You probably won't see it. Um, this is just from our, our example um, and just kind of going fast and trying to catch things as, as we can. Um, so adaptive medical equipment, uh, EMODs are listed. And then we get to their personal profile. Uh, this is a place where we talk about their personal goal and provide a summary and try to give uh, factors and their, about their circumstances, which makes sense when we look at the services re requested. Nothing is different about that from today and using a traditional plan. So your personal goal and a little bit of a bolding or, or a highlight of the person's focus on the coming year. So. This is their, their story, um, who assists that person on a daily basis, how did they get um, closer to meeting their, how, how do they get their needs met now, what do they have to rely on, what are their strengths, um, what are their challenges, uh, what about their living situation is important, that type of thing. Um, progress to pre previous goals here in our sample, it says I've attached data from Therap, which shows the number of times that their work, they worked on a goal. It is very, very helpful um, to please put, you know, a care coordinator would put what the attachment shows and then provide, um, you know, uh, let us know that what the content of that is so that it's not just attaching something and we're not sure what it's used for or why it's there. Um, supported living has a goal. Um, and Sina, is this where I should switch to the next one, or is that the other plan? Is this where I should switch over to that? If you would switch, switch to the, the two and then go okay. to page seven and start from there. All right, I'll do that. Hang on just oh, one second. Actually, it's not. You're still in the, um, the summary. You're still in the like okay. personal profile summary, it's when we get down to the habilitative goals that are for the, the next year. This is a progress, so you have a few more minutes. All right, that sounds good. But whatever, they look the same starting on whatever page, seven page, page seven. <laughs> okay, that's cool, thank you. So their goal, um, this is really a lot like what we're used to. Um, there is um, some formatting that appears within our Harmony form of the support plan that a care coordinator would use to identify a need and identify a goal and objective and interventions for that person 
with some specific language that, that functions as a title to open up a text a text area. Um, but here the we have goals articulated um, per the person, a person-centered goal, just like you're accustomed to seeing. Sure. Okay? What what they're seeing right now is a cut and paste from. Uh, it's just an example of, uh, so this provider provided TheraP notes, this care coordinator basically cut from that TheraP note and pasted it right into this text box that's allowed to be formatted. You see we've got blue colors and red colors and numbers and underlining and stuff like that. So we have a lot of those big, um, just free form um, text boxes in our personal profile section. And so that's what's happened there. When we get okay. down in the plan to where we're listing out a support plan block, which is something you'll be familiar with, but it's about uh, probably eight pages down from where CARE is at right now, um, that will look a little bit differently, familiar, but a little bit differently because it comes into the, um, the CARE coordinators plugging in the goal statement. They're putting it in, in a specified box. Um, and then they're putting in the objective statement in a specified box. And so with the interventions, and then all of that is compiled, it's a data system. So we plug it into a specific box, and then the data system has a report parameter that goes and pulls from each of those boxes and puts it in a spot. So while we're used to working with the old Word format where we can highly manipulate it and whatnot, that's not the case anymore. When the data system pulls a report, it goes to that location in the data system and then drops it there. So things like change the formatting on that, that's not necessarily going to be possible anymore. Mm -hmm. We do see this cut and paste. We're allowed to do bullet points like Kara's showing you here. But this is saying what was the progress towards last. This is, um, in this particular person's case, a lot of information is left in here for future client training because it's been developed. Yeah, this client has been our test client. It's not really a real person, but it's been someone that we've used over the years. Um, as we've been developing the system to make sure we can still use these in a cut and paste situation um, for uh, maintaining client information. You know, we, we know these people, you as providers, you know people, and so we don't want to lose what we've learned. Mm -hmm. And so she's still in progress towards previous goals, so it's still a, a flat cut and paste from a Word document versus what the system will design for you. Um, and so when we get to, and we flip over to the second sample plan, which I now have put in your guys' handouts, you'll be able to see how a goal, um, when it's given to the care coordinator, they put it into the system in the right slots, if you will, how is it pulled into the report? So if you are still in, yeah, you're still in the first sample plan, if you flip to the second one, we'll be able to see that. Okay. And there is a question. You go mm -hmm. ahead, sir. Go I was going to say, there is an awful lot in this particular plan about progress because we were testing the formatting. Mm -hmm. And there's a question about a uh, summary of progress. Um, it, it, as Probably, I said before, yeah. we, we may not be able to answer questions about, you know, content quality like that, being as this is a training about what it looks like for our providers. Um, but go ahead and if you want to share an answer, that'd be cool too. Yeah, okay, well, this question was about um, progress towards previous goals, and Kara alluded to it for a little bit. Um, about a lot of times we do get this app report, and when we the care coordinator cuts and pastes it in here, it makes this document very, very large. And what the care coordinator is responsible for doing in progress towards previous goals is informing the division that we've either made progress, we're maintaining progress, or we didn't quite get there this year. What happened over the last 12 months? It doesn't need to be a repeat of this is the goal, this is the goal statement, and then we have a whole nother like maybe coded line or something that says met at 67%. Okay, we could get that down into a summary of this goal and these objectives were met at this instead of um, this kind of repeated duplicative dialogue that's going on. So a lot of times our care coordinators are put in a position of they don't want to translate what your what your staff and the HAB services have done. We, we really you're you're the ones that did this. You you did the work with this person. What was the summary? Do we have a sample of what that looks like? No, but we are really looking for summary qualitative and quantitative data that we can point to and say 
hey, this person's growing with these services, or gee, we're kind of stagnant, or maybe we need to look at something else. But um, so really giving some time to, I get it, the data systems, especially Therap, they just push back something that, that looks to read, but it's really apply ourselves to, is that a summary? Is that as precise as we can say and still have complete information? That's what I'm leading to. Can I give you a sample? The problem with us giving you a sample is a lot of times then there's other information that gets dropped because it wasn't included in our sample and people look directly at that sample and say, well, since it wasn't in there, I don't need to offer it. We don't, we don't want to empower you to, to leave important stuff out. So while I, I don't have a summary sample for you, um, we'll work on developing that with the review teams. I, I just, it's just not readily available today. Right. Thank you, Sina. So mm -hmm. I'm down to the service block area. This is just the non-HAB services. I just want to show us that it looks pretty similar to what we're accustomed to. So our non-HAB services are here, and I'll just get down to the HAB services. Um, again, you won't see, you know, some of the numbers that are requested here don't make any sense because of service, you know, availability and things like that and regs, but it, it's a sample plan. We re we're literally just trying to test what it looks like and other limitations that come into the um you know how it works together with the cost overview so anyway mm -hmm. okay. i think it's important to stop right here at this definition yes mm -hmm. this has not changed this has been in our plan for 10 years <laughs> it's just that we are so used to it seeing it we don't stop to read it anymore because you know that's just the way it is um but these needs these uh what's uh six eight needs that are here are very, very important. It's um, something that the care coordinator needs to now identify because it's a database system to allow us to pull data. How many of our consumers are we supporting to meet these one of these specific eight needs? Well, now they must identify that. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it's important to know because when you see this, it's different. It's a little different for us to kind of call out having to identify a need. Um, but mm -hmm. you're absolutely right. With a data system, one of the advantages of it is that it helps us use our programs better and to help make services better overall because we are able to um, to discover and combine aggregate data about outcomes, not particular people, not particular agencies, just overall data about how people's needs are met with our HAB services using this methodology. So it will really help us um, with a multitude of, of things that we have to fulfill for our overarching um, CMS or, or other kinds of um, governing entities that, uh, that we answer to for our services. So, and here we have our dehabilitation um, request here. And so, here comes the goal part being continued. Um, objective one, list the skill development for this goal, intervention, partial physical assistance to complete. Um, these parts come from our the development of goals and objectives within um, the, the, the Harmony website. And we'll get to the list of, of our objectives and our intervention um, and even needs that comes up with that in just a bit here. So you'll see these here. Um, it doesn't, uh, it's, a, it's new, but it doesn't mean that only that is what's, what's available to refer to in terms of goals and objectives um, to give us instructions on that. It says data on progress will be recorded by the caregivers once service type um, an objective was supported by weekly case notes and submitted to the agency for weekly review aggregation. This is just our example of how data will be recorded. How it will be reviewed and evaluated is put in there too. Goal two was sustain, uphold, continue, preserve independence in the chosen home setting. It's a continued goal and our interventions are numbered as such with skill development indicate how it will be recorded and measured and reviewed and evaluated so i can just add you saw where it just said list skill development okay that is the prompt to enter in the objective 
statement. So um, again, while we're, this is a test system, so we're just like, okay, eject or whatever. Yes, 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 yes. We were just testing how many we could put in there and it, could, it went on a whole lot more than this, by the way. You could put in 15 objectives per goal. Please don't do that. Um, <laughs> that's a lot for one person. But the objective statement lists the skill development, that would actually be wiped out by your objective statement. What is it? Jesse uh, would like support to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And your intervention would appear there too. Mm -hmm. And sometimes yes, the intervention have. doesn't match with each objective or there's multiple interjectives for each objective. Um, you know, there's a lot of flexibility in how this goes out. You see that 2.81 is a verbal prompt. Okay. We're mm -hmm. going to show you there. There's a list, but we want beyond the list. It's just mm -hmm. a prompt. Okay. So what you're seeing here is titling without without it fleshed out in the way that we're going to show you next about how a care coordinator would actually put the information that you would follow um, to deliver that service. And we'll show you how that works. Uh, before we do that, we do want to show you the, uh, and for out of home residential, this person didn't have it in their plan, but there still is our grid, our chart, if you will, of out of home uh, services for people who live in uh, out-of-home residentials, assisted living, group home, family hub, um, or residential supported living. Uh, at the bottom we have a list of our planning team as we've been accustomed to and we have ne coming up next choice of service. The person will indicate their choice on this this part and then at the end we have this is all like we've accustomed to. We have our signature page. So this is a signature page. Um, the DSDS rep is going to be right here in the middle-ish of the page. And that's upon when it's been, you know, reviewed and, and processed. The person can sign, care coordinator signs. And um, we have, we ask what happens is the provider gets entered, the provider name gets entered previous to this and it prints out on this particular page. So we do want to make it clear that the planning team member, um, we would, we want them to sign. Um, if there is a case where a different agency representative can sign on behalf of that particular planning team member, that we just ask them to go ahead and put their name above the the person the other staff member's name and they can go ahead and sign and you can say signing for this person so it's not held to just who's there it hasn't been with our traditional plan form either um, but we did have some confusion about that because it's pre-printed um, it's still okay to sign on behalf of another team member if that is what you need to do um, and for for signing the plan and you can see the the witness part is the same as what we're accustomed to. And that's towards the end. And that is the end of the particular this particular plan. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to our presentation here. I do want to show us a cost overview sheet. It does look a little bit different. It lists only the services that are requested or and approved in that plan. Um, and will well requested or approved in the plan. Let's see an example of a cost overview sheet. So let me bring that up here and then we'll go on to concentrating more on our HAB services. So our cost overview looks like this and it says cost of the plan of care Again, just ignore the actual numerical units and things like that. Just uh, the the list of of agencies and their billing numbers and service start and end date, service itself, units. Those are all going to be here on this particular um, format. So cost of the plan of care. Okay, so it's not an Excel anymore. It's a printout or a digital save a digital file 
a PDF file from the Harmony system that calculates um, that calculates from that plan the re the request from that plan. And let me go back to the PowerPoint. And we'll start looking at Harmony Support Plan and Habilitation Services. So I am going to start the slideshow from this slide. So what's going on with our habilitation, habilitative services, needs and goals and objectives and interventions? Um, for habilitative services, Harmony has prompts for the care coordinator to help develop the HAB services. Every service is tied to a need, a goal, um, perhaps one or several objectives, usually several, and interventions. So a care coordinator selects a built-in Harmony prompt for each need, goal, objective, and intervention. So these are phrases that are like a title for the, the thoughts and sentences or sentence that will come after it that describes how that particular service is gonna be appropriate to that person or how it will work for that person or what the intervention will be for that person. They're um, hard built into the system and we're gonna share a, a, a document that has them all listed for you so you can begin to use them as um, a conversation starter or to develop our objectives and interventions on behalf of the person. Um, they they can help you form your thoughts about personalizing the need, goal, objective, intervention. Um, prompt phrases alone will not be accepted as elements of a person-centered plan. So if we got a plan that only had the prompt phrases on it without actually telling more about each of these regarding that person, it wouldn't be considered complete. So it's best thought of as a prompt phrase to open a text box or a text area that where the care coordinator enters more about that particular person. They write a specific narrative about each of these. And the purpose of it is like we said before, so that in the future we can provide um, confident, confidential aggregate reports about how people benefited from the services. It just helps us make our services better. And uh, to be able to get that information. So what I have here is a picture of what we have as a, a need, um, a need page, if you will. Um, it's interesting because the needs have a number that get assigned to them, an ID number. A care coordinator will select a person's needs from this list. So we have right here the first 10 that, that come up. So they'll select that and it will get assigned that code number. So mobility, motor skills, self-care, communication, learning, those types of things, you can see those things. These are needs that are common that, that people um, who would use the services in our waiver, habilitation services, um, they would use our services to address these needs. Okay, so the care coordinator um, needs to match that best as best as they can with the person's actual needs as a title phrase or a prompt phrase for that. Okay, uh, here's more needs, right? Primary caregiver relief, um, mobility equipment, adaptations to physical home environment, structure and consistency in routine self-determination, community inclusion, dignity, help to enjoy common rights and privileges of peers. These are all needs that can be selected by the care coordinator in a person's um, plan. And so when it comes to goals, uh, the goals are, are actually, um, we don't have an entire list right here because in when I do a screenshot of it, they're ones that are associated with that particular need that came up. So I chose a need, probably just the first one in the list, and then 
to get a picture of what what the care coordinator sees when they ask for a goal these are ones that would come up as like suggested you know categories underneath that need so this is not to cancel out a person-centered goal or plan in any way this is to provide a title or a prompt phrase so that the care coordinator can open up another box where they enter the person information about that person and their goal they just enter information about their goal and so this is a picture of what that looks like um, this goal is continued or new as we saw prior on the plan and the code of the goal and information about that goal links services that are linked to it and then the info about how it'll be recorded and measured for each objective so like Sina said not every objective objective applies to every goal so a care coordinator will be able to list these out and, and link them to the correct services that um, that are requested to help that person work towards that and again, these are just titles. They're not, they are not the goal in and of itself. If we get them like that without any more information, it wouldn't be complete. It does require that person-centered conversation with that individual to put it together. And so in Harmony, here's how here's what it looks like as a care coordinator develops these. They've chosen a goal, right? Where it says sustain, uphold, continue, preserve independence in the chosen home setting. And there's more dialogue here. Jesse will continue to work on, and, and it just goes on to say what she's going to do. And her objective, she'll continue to practice standing straight. And her intervention will be, the title of it is partial physical assistance to complete. And then it tells how the caregivers will assist Jesse in standing in her place. Though that dialogue, although it's not showing in this summary part, that's what appears in the plan as the intervention, and that will be the dialogue that you have with the care coordinator, and they'll enter that into the plan. And interventions have their own uh, list of typical interventions that a person could benefit from. Again, these are um, prompts or titles to a paragraph or a conversation in which in which a care coordinator would put in um, your directions for staff to provide, for example, hand over hand assist. Okay, what would what does that look like? What will staff do? If the person would benefit from a natural cue, what does that look like? What would staff do? If they benefit from a physical prompt for that event that intervention, what does it look like? And what will the staff do? And so on, right? These are going to be continue to be entered into the plan. And here are lots of other objective or interventions that will probably be helpful for you to talk with staff and individuals and families about, you know, what would work best? Does redirection work? What does it look like? What does the staff do? Role playing, does that is that the best for the person? What does it look like? What does the staff do? So we're requiring person-centered narrative statements. They select the prompt, the care coordinator, which best fits the need, goal, objective, and intervention. Selecting the prompt opens a text field where the custom narrative goes in. Um, we don't accept them without the narrative. And the plan um, report, which is a printout or a PDF of the plan, show digital file, will show the selections in the narrative. And the care coordinator can enter other info in other areas. For example, if there's specific instructions for staff or carryover from last year, I think we looked at our at our plan, there was a segment in there that said it was included for staff training purposes. So there's other places that there can be specific instructions for staff as well. So now I'm down to my Q&A. Um, I do want to show uh, another um, another job aid, if you will. Uh, let me grab that for you real quick. We'll look at it together. It is also in your um, handout section. If you can't get it from the handout section, don't stress out on that. We'll get it to you by email. So you'll have double if you got them both ways. So, And you'll have a handy email that you can shoot us questions back to. That's always good. 
show the screen. So what we have here is our needs, goals, and interventions job aid. This comes right from our care coordinator Harmony training. And we are really hoping that, you know, our providers can partner with our care coordinators in developing the, these so that we can use the titling statements to really talk about the what that's going to do for the person, what it looks like and what it does. Where will the service happen? You know, how, it, it goes with our units too. You know, how much of this particular assistance in this particular environment is necessary? It will help us, we believe, and we hope it will help us really put together um, the measurability of the service so that it can be evident in a plan um, that the the specific objective objectives and interventions that are happening, how they're being offered, you know, what is the person's response. Um, your documentation requirements remain the same. Um, that is hopefully something that this would help as well so that the conversation could be more complete about what to do um, for the particular service for that person. So if the person's need is mobility and motor skills, their goal within it, in harmony, they call it a goal. It's not, you know, the person's goal comes after this and it's after the title. You know, the, the most applicable one, do they want to sustain mobility skills? They want to increase or improve mobility skills. For self-care, do they want to increase independence, sustain, uphold, or continue? Do they want to do this in the community setting? Do they want to do this um, across environments? So this tells you that that particular um, need could, could be supported by a multitude of services. You know, there could be different services that help with self-care. It just doesn't have to be tied to one. And services could support that particular need through goals um, across their day, throughout their day. So it's, it's meant to help depict a comprehensive application of specific, um, you know, specific goals slash interventions. Um, okay, so a couple of questions here. I'll scroll down on that just a second here, but there's a couple of questions. Uh, question says, how do we obtain access to Harmony? Is there a charge? Is it like Therap where we could subscribe to it? Um, where somebody could grant access to team members, like a care coordinator granting access to have providers? to work on a common interest. Um, SDS decides the entry into Harmony um, solely SDS. There isn't uh, any kind of a subscription or ability for a user to admit another user. Um, that's, it, it, it's specifically that um, the Harmony user agreement actually lines out that it's only applicable to the person who's approved. So they're they're gonna have, you know, they can't share their passwords and do things like that. That would be against the user agreement. Um, that is not what we wanna see. And it, it's, you know, there's a risk with that. And if somebody shared their info so that people who aren't authorized to go in, um, you know, that could be a finding for quality for sure. So our answer was SDS grants access to certified care coordinators to enter the support plan elements and maintain the client demographics. Other provider types that have Harmony access are PCS agency admins and long-term care admins. All other provider types do not have access to consumer records in Harmony, but we'll be working with the, with the support plan report that is printed or digitally created through the care coordinator. Um, so, so there is no uh, subscription or co-sharing or otherwise sharing of access to Harmony. We will review the recording. Okay, so is there a recording available? Um, we hope to have a good recording available to you. Uh, it does take a little bit for us to edit it so that it's, you know, for clarity and time and it takes a while for it to upload to our YouTube channel, but we do have a YouTube channel that we do that with. So people who missed this could certainly check it out. Um, uh, communication, learning, 
um, hopefully this makes sense to you that this could be a way to um, co-develop these uh, co-develop co these what what the form says goals that make sense under that type of a need and then flesh them out so that you could identify them and then flesh them out specifically to that person um, if Kara is going to receive day habilitation to for example um, meet the need of self-direction and social skills which one of these it makes more sense for her um, to pursue increase during integrated activities sustain during integrated activities increase or improve self-direction across all settings okay so if I am working on you know if I want to work on uh, friendships conversation skills or something like that I would my care coordinator would choose one of these and then work out what that what that looks like for me different steps that would be taken to get to that would be our objectives and our in, interventions um, would would be coming from another job aid here so Again, these are pretty interesting. Coping skills, access to services, transportation, nutrition, these are all likely things a person might need assistance with from a service. So our intervention codes are here. Um, it says all intervention codes are available to select regardless of the goal code. So the ones that were above are going to be applicable to certain services um, as they match, right? These are available under any service according to what works best for the person. So here you can see interventions and again they would need to be um, addressed specifically for that person in writing in the plan and for the purpose of uh, like it says in the plan the next person could pick it up and know what to do to assist that person. So we are distributing this and care coordinators have it too. Uh, we do get questions sometimes, like you'll begin to see more care coordinators use this for our habilitation services. Um, we just wanted to make sure that you're aware of what this is and where it comes from and its, its advantages and its limitations, and that we welcome you to participate in the planning process using this, and of course never lose sight of the person-centered requirement for this um, in order to create the Harmony Plan. Okay, so um, what are your further questions? And staff, have I left anything out that I should mention? We got your written questions so far. They were about who can, who can use Harmony, but hopefully we're clear about that. and that will have a video, and then that will provide you with materials through email. What are your other thoughts or, or questions, concerns, anything on your mind right now? Just go ahead and type it into the chat area or text, which, whatever it says, probably says text. Go ahead and share that with us, if you will. And it could be that folks are thinking um, and writing. Anything to add? Go ahead. Hi, this is Tina. And I just wanted to kind of throw a little prompt out there in your brain. Um, Kara, could you flip the screen back to the signature page on our support plan? So that uh, our other providers, other than care coordinators with us, you can really consider what it, because it looks a little bit different um, we have heard from care coordinators that have been piloting the system for us for the last year that they have had some, you know, some concerns from providers going, this does not look like what I'm used to. That's true. Um, well, we do have a lot of elements that are same. Uh, it's in a lot of the very similar order and whatnot. It is a digital printout. 
versus the Word document you're used to seeing. So this um, signature and the plan will come to you most likely digitally through a DSM email. You're used to that. Um, but it may include the entire, say, 30, pl 30 pages of the plan. You know, they vary everywhere from 16 to 50 pages. Ooh, that's a big plan. But um, you might see that entire document and then an extra page that is just, okay, here's the signature sheet. And you'll see your planning team member listed on that signature page. And that's not you, but you're the one who needs to authorize the services for your company. It's okay to just simply print your name, or if you are, you know, PDF fabulous, uh, go ahead and enter it in there, type it in there, and then add your signature right there. Because the person that's part of your planning team and was probably meeting with the care coordinator and the person during the planning process of this may not be you. Your role with the company might be different. Either way, you're both representatives of the company and STS is happy to have it, but we need to have your authority that you recognize this is what this person's plan says is the way that you are going to support them, right? So it's okay if your name is not printed there, go ahead and add it, it's certainly fine. There will be a line that says, as you see in this example, um, you know, Steve Respite is from Consumer Direct Care. Okay, and if you were uh, Joni Playing, that's your name, Joan Playing, then type Joan Playing or enter it right above Steve Respite and go ahead and sign, right? We don't want to delay this process at all. Uh, any other questions about the signature page? Um, that also being said is that it's okay to just send back just this page. We, we have the actual plan, the care coordinator has the plan digitally already. So don't feel like you need to print out all 30 pages of the plan and then put your signed page on the back and then scan in 31 pages and send it back. That's really not necessary. Okay. I'm watching your question box come in. And always, no question is a silly question. Please ask them because, you know, we are so close to this. Delight and I and Kara are so close. We've been doing this. It feels like nonstop for five years now. Um, that There's just stuff that you guys look at it and go, wow, what? Where did that come from? And, you know, we won't give you the whole long story, but we'll realize that we didn't explain something. So please ask it. Okay. All right. Well, as usual, SDS training at alaska.gov is a good spot for us. It allows all four of our training team members um, to access it. Some of us are, you know, meeting, meeting, meeting all day long, and some of us have the luxury of looking at email. I just am putting it into our um, response there mm -hmm. in the questions. Uh, question cool. says, when will all care coordinators be active in Harmony? So we're working on training them. Uh, we do have a training schedule. I mean, this isn't, I don't have a hard date right now. Mm -hmm. We're hoping to have everybody in, of course, sometime this quarter. There may be a need for um, additional trainings after that. Uh, care coordinators, after they complete the training, you know, they finish their work they already did it, without, you know, outside of Harmony using DSM. So nobody has to do work over again mm -hmm. just because it's in Harmony, but they'll start new work within, uh, within Harmony. And we're just going to have to monitor that and stay, stay close to the needs of our, of our users um, and care coordinators. Mm -hmm. And we're, you know, the, the system, like Sina said, sometimes sometimes something happens and we didn't know what was going to happen because there's different users in there and something weird happens and they say, hey, training, why? You know, then we go figure it out and sometimes it's a configuration or it's just nothing or it's not, the training was wrong. Yeah, it's hard yeah. to say. Yeah, just so you know, we have a really great team of system admins here. Um, they We actually hunted down 
tracked down and they fixed two things this morning that we didn't know were going to be an issue until we had care coordinators actually, you know, community care coordinators. Now we have care coordinators that work for SDS and they've been, you know, sludging through and using the system and going, hey, hey, this is not working. And that's really helped us over the last year that they've been doing that. But now we have community-based care coordinators in there and they're finding things and we're like, oh yeah, okay. So our on-site system administrators, they fix what they can, but there's some limitations. They, there's some programming that has to go up to the big developers. And uh, so if we can fix it or find a, a way to reutilize the system better, we're doing that. But um, yeah, care coordinators are in. Um, I'm I'm kind of amazed at how fast some of them have jumped into it and they're like, hey, I knocked out all of my work like right here. This was great. I, I printed like three things instead of 30 things. So we're getting a lot of positive feedback from the care coordinators as they're using this. It, it's a bit of a learning curve, but generally care coordinators are pretty resilient, learn, you know, they just kind of go with it. It's like, all right, that solution didn't work. We're going to find another one. Less who we, we hear are. that once you, yeah, we hear that once you start using it and you practice it a couple times, it gets easier and easier, mm -hmm. and then it it just becomes easy. So, you know, the hope is that that it's it does become that way. It's not mm -hmm. intended to be super complicated. I get, I guess, because it's new, it it you know, it's a learning curve. Mm -hmm. But it's not that it's not you usable. People are using it now. We're we're getting a lot of really good feedback and we're luckily able to help people um, who, you know, just have different barriers and there's just take a little bit more time, you know, everybody's different, so. Yep. Yeah, and so the purpose yeah. of meeting with you guys today was to say that, hey, there's a new report. There are some, some new limitations, like you can't just go in and turn that list into a bullet point. <laughs> it's, it's not that easy, <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, question says, is it to the point now that we can go ahead and attempt doing plans in harmony? This is from a care coordinator. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a care coordinator can do plans in harmony at any time after mm -hmm. their uh, provision, after they have, you know, their training Got and their to provision to do, to do that. They have to be able to do it after they become a full user. Yeah. Yeah. So Appendix K is still a form and you'd have to go through the training to realize how you can utilize it. Um, I will say, and if Kara didn't already explain to you, that Care Coordinator Full Access Training is a complete week of interactive training with the training team. So it's not a sit and watch the video sort of thing. It's not anything. It is a hands-on, you know, training. We show you how to do something. We do it with you. We let you do it yourself, and then we correct your work. So we are empowering the person to learn the process. So it's it's a pretty heavy lift for the care coordinator to do that, and that has to fit in their work schedule. That's why we can't just hand them a guide and say, here, go for it, guys. Yeah, that's, no, that's not going to work well. So, um, yeah, so, you know, there are ways uh, to basically get everything done that we're doing by DSM, almost everything can be done in the system. Everything that's submitted, a care coordinator uh, will submit into the system. But direct secure messaging is just, is still there. It's still very, very important between the care coordinator and the provider, and between the care coordinator and SDS when we're solving case-specific issues, because not all that stuff belongs in a case record that's durable. This will, these will last hundreds of years. Okay. So your DSM is still really super important. Very important when you encounter providers not using DSM, let us know and we will help them to use DSM because we need it and our clients need the protection. Okay. Any other questions, thoughts? We don't have to stay the whole time. There's no rule that says we have to stay all the way till 2.30. It's up to you. Questions, thoughts? I got this one. Questions from our provider group.
Okay. Um, I'm not seeing a lot of questions. We're kind of we're down to the last one that we had. Um, it doesn't look like they're you know folks are trying to type them in and things like that. That's okay. Um, what we'll do is I'll go ahead and call it. I'll close the session. Um, it doesn't mean that this is the only time that you have to ask us a question. Please email us if you have a question outside of this session, sdstraining at alaska.gov. Anytime um, in our journey towards being a harmony using group. So we welcome those. Um, so do that, please. And, and if you haven't and you're able to, please download your handouts from the handout sec section and um, look for our email too. So we'll also, uh, when it's available, we'll post our, um, our video on our YouTube. And um, hopefully that, that uh, will help us all uh, in, our, in our journey and in increasing our knowledge. Okay, um, thanks again, everybody. And goodbye for now.